everybody. Welcome back to the Hair of the Dog podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Bagley, and I am here today with my friend and special guest, Dory Hal from Dory Hal Photography. Dory, hello. Yes. How are you? I am so good, Nicole. I love these podcasts so much. It's always so great to sit and chat with you about whatever the topic of the day is. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I know. And <laughs> like you and I can just chat about all sorts of topics. In fact, yes. when we were getting ready to do this, we're like, I don't know. What should we talk about? Yeah, so many we things talk about today. Ah, Let's do it. I love it. I love it. Um, and actually, we're going to be chatting about something that not enough people chat about. Yes. And that is communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I can hear all of my pet photographers right now. They're like, I photograph pets because I don't like people. I'm an introvert. (laughs) (laughs) The problem with that is though, is that pets have owners. Exactly. And And the pets don't have the checkbook. (laughs) Right. And they don't have the credit card and they're not the (laughs) ones hiring you. So unfortunately, the, the actual process of working with pets the actual process and the time that you spend with the actual animal itself is a very small portion of that transaction. Yeah. And so having really great communication skills so that you can deal with owners in an effective way and in a way that they can relate to, I believe is really, really important. And the reason why I love talking about this so much, Nicole, is you hit it right on the head. Is like, this is something that people don't talk about enough. Mm -hmm. Like we all think that we're really good at communicating. We all think that we know the English language. We have a pretty good vocabulary. So what's the problem? Everyone should be able to understand what we say and and the meaning behind what we say, the meaning behind those words. And I think it's pretty safe to say that that is not always the case. Yeah. We, um, you can see it in Facebook groups all the time. How do I handle this? Or someone got uh-huh. mad at this. Or you see little arguments starting where you're like, that probably wasn't The way that that came across was probably not the attended way Mm. of the person who said it or the person Mm -hmm. who typed it. So how can we become better communicators to all kinds of people so that we can get our message across? And so many people think communication means that our great communication means that we're in agreement with each other. And that's not what great communication is. Great communication is just having an understanding of each other. That doesn't mean we're in agreement with each other. So by understanding some of those basics, it's going to help us become better with our clients and hopefully build our businesses as a result. Yeah, absolutely. I've always said this so many times that I see so many photographers that think, a couple different myths about how they get clients. Number one is I just need great images. Number mm-hmm. two is I've got the great images and a great website. Now I just need to do a couple social posts. But mm-hmm. I always say that the, gosh, the main fuel on that fire of your marketing is still personal relationships. And it's still 100%. getting to know people in your market and getting out from behind the computer and actually talking to humans. <laughs> Wait, what? We have to talk to people too? Humans. Humans. We have to talk to human story. <laughs> I know. And you know, I can relate to this so much because my sister is one of these people. She's a dog person. And we uh-huh. have Izzy. Izzy was our Izzy is her adoptive COVID dog. She got Aww. her right. Our mom passed away right at the beginning of COVID, mm-hmm. not because of COVID, but yeah. total side thing, but just timing with that. And my sister not being married, and we'd always want a dog, but we could never have a dog growing up because of my dad's allergies. So she went out at the age of, what, 53 or something and got herself her first rescue puppy, Izzy, who we love so much. But she has become a a full-blown dog person, and that's how Izzy goes everywhere with her. And I can tell some of her communication is maybe – she'll never hear this, so it's okay Um, (laughs) – is – is – Not as good as it used to be because Mm -hmm. she's used to talking to her dog all the time. And that's perfectly fine. There's no judgment in there at all. But I can see how we really need to keep up on those interpersonal skills with people and Mm -hmm. keep those language skills up up to the bar that we want them to be so that we represent our business well. Yeah, absolutely. I can imagine during COVID... I mean, it probably caused a lot of us. We were all communicating Mm -hmm. a lot more via email or text or Facebook typing, a lot more typing. A lot more typing. Um, You know, and obviously some increase in Zoom, but that in-person interaction went down dramatically. (laughs) And the trend now, especially, is in more casual communication. So Mm -hmm. it is with texting. It is with 
um, social media posts back and or or messages back and forth. So that's great once you have an established relationship with someone. Mm-hmm. But when you're mm-hmm. just trying to to create a relationship with someone, those necessarily aren't the best tools to use. And so I always say, especially when you're communicating policies, pricing, or anything like that, that you want a documented trail that you've actually communicated those things to your client. So phone conversations and the emails are the way to go with that. And it is sometimes it feels like you're fighting an upstream battle because if you don't want to hop on the phone, probably your client really doesn't either. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they may not see the need to do that. But if you can tell them, listen, this is for your benefit because I need to understand fully what you expect of me from the session so I can meet those expectations. And having a phone conversation is so much easier than going three days back and forth with emails. Nobody's got time for that. Yeah. Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. Yeah. So when I was learning and trying to come up with a way that I could communicate the message that photographers need to make their communication skills better. Uh, my family and I, we went for a, a trip to Jamaica and it, we had a really nice room when we actually ended up having a personalized butler, which was something Ooh, really fancy. Fun. We weren't used to that. <laughs> and we had Anthony and Anthony was fabulous. And the thing was, is that Anthony is a native Jamaican gentleman uh-huh. and he has a different communication style than we do. And so when it came to asking him to do certain things, we were using the WhatsApp app. So we were Uh communicating when we weren't face-to-face. I could tell that we, there were certain times where he was not fully understanding what we were saying, even though we were talking about maybe dinner reservations or times or that type of thing. But there was definitely a quote unquote language barrier, even though we were both speaking Mm. English and we Mm -hmm. were talking about something that was pretty easy to discuss whether what we wanted for lunch or where we wanted to make a dinner reservation. There were a few times where we had to back up and I told my husband, I'm like, okay, we need to say that in a different way because that is not coming across the way that I wanted to come across to him. Gotcha. And there was no conflict. It wasn't rude communication. He wasn't becoming offended at anything, but it was obvious that we were not meeting that base requirement of communication of both parties understanding things. Mm -hmm. And it just got me thinking of like, how many times do we go round and round with clients? Because they think they're saying one thing one way, we're interpreting it another way or vice versa. And things get thrown off the rail a little bit in a session before we can get it back on board. What can we do to make sure that we're communicating effectively so that what we are trying to say is being interpreted and absorbed the way we want it to to the person who's receiving it. So it kind of, it led me down a big, huge rabbit hole. I'm not going to lie, but I found out some really, really great things to share just because I think it's really important that we all work on this and it's something that's always, always going to happen. So the thing we have to remember is there's a lot of different communication styles, specifically therapists and psychologists and that type of thing have have narrowed it down to seven communication styles. Everybody fits into one of these things, and that's how we communicate, and usually that's how we do our copy, that's how we do our social media, because that's what we're comfortable with. But we have to remember, there's six other communication styles out there, and all there's tons of people, tons of wonderful clients who fit into those communication styles as well. So if you're only speaking, for lack of a better word, one language or in Mm -hmm. one style, you're only really going to attract one style of person who was attracted to that communication style. Interesting. Does that make sense? Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Yeah. I'm dying to know what the seven styles are. All right. We're we're going to get what I am and how you figure out what your clients are. I have so many questions. So that's the the tricky part (laughs) is sometimes you can't figure out what your client is. Yeah. So you kind of have to tiptoe into these. And these are what I consider as I dove into this kind of the extremes. And then there's combinations of Mm -hmm. things. And then we're all different multifaceted people. So we all maybe have one persona and one communication style in one environment, like moms in your Mm. home, you all, you know, you communicate in a certain way, you communicate in a certain way with your pet, but then you communicate a different way with your friends. And maybe if you Mm -hmm. have an office job or that type of thing. So 
there's, it's, everybody's a combination, but usually everyone has a primary communication style. So out of these seven, the first one is assertive. They're, they have no problem speaking their mind, trying to get a, a thought across. They can clearly state their opinions and feelings and also advocate for their rights and needs. So Mm -hmm. I am an assertive communicator. I will stand up for myself. I will speak my mind. I'm not rude or, or pushy, but I'm assertive, right? Yep. So a lot of times people say, well, how can I become more assertive? Because there's a lot of us who aren't comfortable in that assertive arena. Uh, that's me. And I'm, I'm, I'm like, I can do it, but I'm like, oh God, I hate ooh, doing this. <laughs> right, right. Like you, like you have that, like it's uncomfortable the whole time, uh, yeah, right? Yeah. So to become a more assertive communicator, you need to speak from your place of confidence. Usually, when you're trying to stand up for yourself, you're doing it because you want something, but you're not. You don't want to be pushy, so you just mm-hmm. need to stand up for yourself. And then you also need to consider your needs and the needs of the person that you're communicating with. What is the mutual uh, the mutual outcome that you want? You're not trying to railroad them because that's mm-hmm. not what an assertive person does. You're not trying to act without empathy or compassion. You're just trying to come to a resolution for something. So you need to consider both those needs. And also words matter so much when it comes to communication. So for example, with an assertive communicator, they're going to use words like I will, or you, you should consider versus you should, you could, you must. Mm -hmm. Like softening the language a little bit around those types of maybe conflicts is going to go so far in the long run. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, according to the research, the assertive communicator is the most effective communicator and also the one that you should try and be because you are empathetic, you are compassionate, you're not railroading your the person you're trying to um, come to an agreement with, but you are standing up for yourself and making sure that your view is getting across in a firm way. Mm -hmm. Right. And how you do that then comes down to personality styles of how firm do you think is appropriate. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times society, the person that you're communicating with is going to let you know pretty quick if you're coming down too hard, or maybe you think you need to step it up a bit. So it's all, it's about being able to really be aware of your surroundings and with the person that you're talking with, being able to read them pretty well. So then we have The second one is is aggressive, aggressive communicators. Now, aggressive communicators usually do some of these following things. They speak or they type in a loud, overbearing voice, you know, the all capitals or the really (laughs) aggressive wording. They criticize others. They're not scared to humiliate others or, or tear other people down to make themselves look better. They are always trying to dominate a conversation. They'll interrupt you. There's a lot of you statements, accusatory you statements. Mm. And they have tempers usually that are a little bit more easily triggered than others. Being an aggressive communicator is not good when you own your own business. No. That is no. not what that is I would imagine not, it's not good in many situations. Right. It's not if good in a lot a of different situations. Or any right? of that. Yeah. A marriage. So, <laughs> right. No, no, no. So the thing is, is how do you, if you have a client who's very aggressive, which I have had several times, mm-hmm. um, how do you communicate with them? How do you, how do you soften the situation mm-hmm. so that you don't feel so attacked, um, attacked <laughs> right? But also you're like, yeah, they're my client. I want to, Mm -hmm. I want to work with them so that they pay me money and get out of my studio. So I never have to see them again. Like, how do I close this up and wrap this up? Right. Right. So it's a tough one. Aggressive communicators are notoriously difficult to work with. That's just, they just are. There's not a lot that you can do to make them change their ways. Mm -hmm. So the best thing that you can do is always control what you can control. So don't take things personally. It's just their communication style. And even in different cultures, we know that certain cultures have a much more in your face way of communicating. Mm -hmm. Like I walked into um, an Italian market one day in Florida and it was Doris's Italian market. And my proper government name is Doris. And I wanted one of their t-shirts and I was heavier at the time. And the 
owner who wasn't Doris. It was named after her grandmother. So she just looked at me. She said, well, we don't have a size. It's going to fit you. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, oh, well, so okay. Harsh. well, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm sh- I'm like all oh, right, but I want to buy one anyway because maybe someday I will fit into this shirt and I can uh-huh. wear it, you know, just whatever. But it was a very aggressive way of approaching mm-hmm. me and dealing with me in a way that could be in- interpreted as very hurtful. Side note to the story: I bought the shirt, I wore it last week, so haha, you know, it's on her, right? Okay, <laughs> I love it. I right. love it. So, how to adjust your aggress- aggressive style to communicate better? Try and muster up all that self-confidence that you can, that you are worthy, you are you are not less than them, that their personal attacks are not personal, even mm-hmm. though they might be trying to make them personal, personable. Or, mm-hmm. They might feel personal, but they're... Right, yeah. but they're not. Mm-hmm. It's just yep. a business transaction. Mm-hmm. And the only way that they know to try and get you to conform to what they want is to try and attack you personally. Mm-hmm. So try mm-hmm. and brush those off. Because it's probably worked in the past for them. So they have reinforcement well, history. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. It has worked for them in the past. Mm-hmm. And so that that enforces that pattern with them. So there's a lot of different things that you can do, but just understanding that that is their communication style and mm-hmm. you're probably not going to change it. The only thing you can do is change how you deal with it and how you mm-hmm. interpret it is going to save you the best in the best way. Yeah. So then you have a passive aggressive style and passive aggressive is extremely difficult. And all of us, I think, can be passive aggressive in our own little way. So this is, it's a combination of passive, but that like there's aggressive styles are in your face and usually Mm -hmm. loud and using really, Mm. really harsh words. Mm -hmm. Passive aggressive are going to basically get that same point across, but the way they do it is going to be a lot softer. So the communi- the person you're communicating with might seem sweet and easygoing, but they're usually operating from a place of like that simmering anger below the surface mm-hmm. or some something that they're unhappy about. And when it bubbles up, it can be shown through sarcasm. It can be patronizing. They can be gossipy. They can start rumors. And there's no time in any situation that a passive aggressive communication style is appropriate for business. Mm-hmm. And we have all dealt with passive aggressive communicators personally and in business. People who say one thing, but it's done with a smile and a wink and like they laugh it off because it's like sarcastic and it might mm-hmm. come across as like cool or appropriate. Mm-hmm. But in business situations, especially when you are the business owner, that's really not going to be your best way of interacting with your clients. So that is something to consider with passive aggressive. Then we have the submissive passive style. This is something that we see a lot. This is the non-communicator. It's the people pleaser. Mm. It's the person who wants to do or say something, but with no conflict or distress at all. So because they can't do that a lot of times, they don't say anything. Mm Mm-hmm. And that doesn't mean that they're not thinking things. It doesn't mean they don't have an opinion about you, but they don't say anything to speak up for themselves or advocate for themselves. And we've all probably had clients like that where they said everything was beautiful on the surface. They loved it so much. They can't wait to work Mm -hmm. with us again when they're face-to-face with us. But then we either get a bad Google review or we hear through the grapevine that they're talking bad about us behind our back or that type of thing. It's because they have that passive submissive style. And it's Mm. like the non-communication style, which isn't good for anybody. (laughs) Right. (laughs) To me, that's almost the, out of all of them, to me, that's the most frustrating to deal with. Yeah. Right. Right. Cause you're asking them too of, you know, and and I know many of us, myself included, you know, always follow up with our clients of Mm -hmm. after the artwork's been delivered or, you know, a week or two, how is everything? I want to make sure it's 110% amazing, you know, mm-hmm. and to then right. give them so many opportunities to let me know that mm-hmm. there's something they're not happy with and then go around and do it in a passive aggressive like way. Like just behind your back. Oh, it's yeah. like, I would, I would much rather have someone yell at me. Uh huh. And this sounds horrible because some people wouldn't understand this, but yeah. I would much rather have someone yell at me, get it out. So I knew exactly where I stood uh-huh. versus thinking I'm secure in a situation, then all of a sudden hearing about it in a behind the behind my back kind of way. 
Yeah. Like, that's just that's just not that's not good people skills, but there are mm-hmm. a lot of people and everybody knows them because everybody's going to know someone who fits into one of these categories, mm-hmm. right? Yep, yep. Right? We sure. all know it. As soon as I start <laughs> describing who they are, the like, type of person you know, they are, they're like, oh, yep, that person, that person, that person, that person. I, I know it, right? Uh-huh. And those are probably people that you don't, like if you want to be in a social situation, like you might not really get, quote unquote, like you uh-huh. kind of walk away and you're like, I don't really understand. Like they're weird. I don't really get them, right? Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So the next one is the manipulative style. So a manipulator knows what they want to achieve and has clear goals, but they're just not necessarily taking the best path to get there. So they might prioritize everyone else's needs, but not their own. And they don't want to upset anyone, but in the end, they upset everyone because they didn't Ad, again, they didn't advocate for themselves. They didn't speak up or they tried to do things in a way that wasn't necessarily upfront. Mm-hmm. So whether that could be, I've had, I've had clients, I've had clients in all these categories. Someone who books me, understands the policies, understands I do IPS, all those types of things. But then when they get to the sales appointment, really, I just can't have all the digitals with that. I thought they were included. Mm, like, mm-hmm. And in my mar- in my brain, I'm thinking, no, you didn't. I told you six times in right. writing to your face that they weren't included or trying to get a discount or that type of thing. Sometimes people do this subconsciously, but there's mm-hmm. a lot of people out there who are manipulative on purpose mm-hmm. because they know it can get them what they want. They can beat people down and mm-hmm. get people what just they give want. in. Yeah, they give like, in because fine, it's like, just I can't even deal with you. Like, yeah, <laughs> just go away, never come back, right? Right, right. So, you know, work on being more direct. Understand that um, if you are a manipulative communicator, if you understand that that is your default style, understands that it's going to breed resentment, it's not going to get you what you want, eventually this will blow up in your face. These are um, harsh story. <laughs> these are harsh. I know. When I was reading through these, I'm like, you're really like everyone probably feels a little bit called out. And that's not like <laughs> that's not my intention at all. But when I started digging into this, I really realized how it was like, oh, that like I said, that's uh-huh. why I don't understand that uh-huh. person. That's why I don't like. I don't understand, like, I don't get it. I just don't yeah, like kind of scratch right. your head when you uh-huh. walk away from talking or you read an yep. email from someone. Yep. Like, I just don't, really? I don't get that. <laughs> I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to be empathetic. I'm going to try and be kind and right. understanding, but it just kind of leaves you scratching your head. And it's mm-hmm. not because you're not a good communicator and it's not because they're necessarily a bad communicator, but it comes down to styles. Mm-hmm. And so many of us assume like I said earlier, that we assume that people are going to understand everything that we say in the way that we intend it. But that just isn't the case. So then we need to go and be really, really clear about what we're saying and how we're saying it in any of our communication. And that's Mm -hmm. one reason why you hear this all the time, why I love phone calls so much. Mm-hmm. And I know that immediately just struck a huge nerve with a lot of I people. I know. It's like, ah, no, don't I make hate me the get phone. on the phone. I can't do it. <laughs> the reason is, is if I had just, if you read a transcript of this podcast mm-hmm. and you heard everything that I said, you'd probably be like, man, these are really harsh. Like, I really feel called out. I might. If I'm if I'm a passive communicator, I might even be offended. Mm-hmm. But if you hear me say these words and you understand, okay, Dory's inflection and her heart behind her words are so much different, then it's something that can be, you can mm-hmm. work through. And mm-hmm. so whenever I'm trying to get a client on the phone, I just say, listen, I under I call it out. This is yeah. my phone. Phone. It's the elephant the in the room. You are busy. Oh, you don't want to go on the phone. I, say, <laughs> I totally understand. You're completely busy and no one wants to hop on the phone. But the reason why I ask that we mm-hmm. do that is that we'll be able to get, I'll be able to give you so much more information and ask her, answer your questions so much more effectively in a 10 minute phone call than 10 emails back and forth. Mm-hmm. Just call mm-hmm. it out. And when I put it that way, almost, I usually don't have a problem getting someone on the phone. 
Yeah. And I think we can right? look at that for just like every piece of our business. Mm-hmm. And um, there was a study somewhere and I'm going to mess up where it was and what the details were. But it was essentially if you tell someone why, so we're telling them, hey, this is why and this is how it's going to benefit you, which we can do in so many different places in our business. But there was a study where people were in line for like a copier. And if you just walked up and asked to cut in line, like you only like 10% of people would let you in. But if you walked up to say, hey, can I jump in front of you and gave a reason, even if that reason was because I have to make copies, which everyone in the line has to make (laughs) copies. It was like 90% of the people or something said, yeah, sure, go ahead. (laughs) Well, I find that I find that I've actually had that this little TMI, but you know, women's lines in restrooms, especially at big public events can really, Uh really long. And I had a situation once where I really needed to get to the front of the line. <laughs> yeah, and I've been and, in that situation. <laughs> right? Or or even the security line at the airport. We'll uh-huh. take the bathroom scenario right. out of it with the security <laughs> line at the airport. And I have pre-check and all that kind of stuff. But even that can be, mm-hmm. you can get lines. And I just, I, the fly, I was late on a bus getting to the airport because of traffic. It wasn't because I didn't plan accordingly. Right. I needed to get to the front of that line so I could run a mile to try and make my plane. Mm-hmm. And I, excuse me, my, their doors are about to close. Excuse me, excuse me. And I just went in, went in and everyone let me through because I wasn't yeah. being a jerk. Like they could probably see the panic on my face uh-huh. of like, I'm, I'm going to miss my flight, which I did. Yeah. And I, I ended up spending the night in the Seattle airport, which was you know, another <laughs> adventure. But, um, you know, if you give people a reason why, they're going to be so mm-hmm. much more agreeable to at least think about doing what you want. Mm-hmm. And especially when you make enough. that reason why, why it's beneficial for them and right. our business standpoint. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What's in it for them. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's jump back in Dory and I'm dying to know what are these other two um, communication styles? Okay. So these are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. So six is direct. There are people in your world that speak their mind very clearly and very directly. They're not necessarily emotional about it, but they are going to get their point across in a very direct way. They choose their words carefully. They care, their, their words can sometimes be a little bit more on the sharp edge, mm-hmm. I would say. How I would, that's how I would interpret it. Mm-hmm. But again, it's not personal. It's just that's their way of communicating. So for me, I can be very direct. Mm-hmm. But again, I have to kind of shade that with empathy and compassion and caring and kindness so that it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings. And the mm-hmm. way you do that is in your tone or in your word choice. And then you have indirect. I don't know if you've ever sat in a situation where you're sitting with someone for 20 minutes and you're just like, land the plane already, <laughs> right? Get to the point. <laughs> they want to use all their vocabulary words that they have at their disposal to make one point when they probably probably could have only used 20 of those words. Uh-huh. Right? So, indirect communicators can be very frustrating for someone like me because I see it as a kind of a waste of time. Mm-hmm. It's like we could have done this a lot more effectively. <laughs> and in that case, if you know you're working with someone who is a com- who has that communication style, Email might be your friend with them Mm. because they can get all their words out. Usually they're not going to type as many words as they're going to say. Mm -hmm. They can get it all out and you can read it the way that you read it and interpret it quicker. Mm -hmm. So indirect communicators, if that's you, what you need to be careful of with your email copy and your website copy and all of the the things that you might be writing or if you're doing Facebook Lives or any sort of video um, education for your client base, mm-hmm. you want to make sure that you're you're being concise enough to keep people interested mm-hmm. and not just talking for the sake of talking. And that is something that absolutely can happen with Clubhouse was so popular. I would hop in those rooms and I'm just like, this person needs to land the plane. They need to get their point across. But it was a struggle for them. It's I'm not saying that in a mean way, but it was right, just a, right. it was a struggle for them. Mm-hmm. So being aware, I think when you go through all these different communication styles, and if you research it a little bit, understanding where you fit in the spectrum and what traits you have, and then understanding what other traits other people have, Mm -hmm. it can really bridge that gap of being able to 
communicate more effectively in your marketing and everything else that you're doing to try and get the word out about your business because not everyone is like you. Mm -hmm. And we usually default to communicating in the way that is most comfortable for us. So I have to really be careful with my emails because I can be too direct and too assertive. And then when I get replies back from people who communicate different from me, I have to take it all with a grain of salt and realize, okay, what are they, what are just the words here? Like, Mm -hmm. it's not a personal attack. What are the words here that they're trying to to say to me and go from, go from there? And being aware of these different styles and understanding of these different styles, I think is one of the biggest things photographers don't do. And that is why we have so many issues in our business when it comes to how we relate to our clients. Mm -hmm. I love the one takeaway that I'm hearing from all this too, is that we need to take the responsibility Mm -hmm. to have the effective communication. And we need to take the responsibility like no one, and this goes with everything in life, not just communication, but no one can make us feel a certain way. Like we have the power on how we're going to receive things. Right. Absolutely. You know, I'm, certainly things can hurt. Certainly things can make us sad. But ultimately, we are the ones that can choose how we react to these situations. Right. And we need to remember that. <laughs> how you interpret, no one can make you feel bad. Mm-hmm. Like no one can make you feel emotional. Like all, if you own your own emotions in this process mm-hmm. and just take the words for what they are, they're not personal swords going into your heart. They're mm-hmm. just words and words can be hurtful, but in a business situation, that's what we're, you know, I want to make sure that we're, we're saying, you know, probably everyone, if they're married or they're in a relationship, realize, oh my gosh, I communicate this way. They communicate <laughs> this way. Like, this is why we're having conflicts. Well, now, you know, mm-hmm. like now, you know, and in a business situation, most people aren't going to be out there trying to hurt you personally. They're right. just trying to either understand a situation or maybe get something out of you that you didn't, uh, you know, originally offer. <laughs> you can, all those digital file stories, those, they were included. Files. <laughs> digital files, give me five locations and I want to do it in 15 minutes at this, at you know. Two at two o'clock on a Wednesday in the bright two sun. O'clock <laughs> Wednesday on the sh- bright, shiny, sunny day. And more power to those photographers who don't think two o'clock on an afternoon is a problem. I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, nope. Nope. I mean, I guess if you could do anything, well, I mean, if you have some lights and whatnot, but yeah, if you have lights, yeah. you can do it. But yeah, that's, that's, that's not me. No, nope. so. no. Nope. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So you were talking a little bit too about, um, earlier or chatting about things about good versus bad. Mm-hmm. And is because there's so many things, you know, that it's like, oh, why are, that we shouldn't necessarily label as good or bad, right? But right, is does that apply here to like these types of communication? Because I'm sure people are going to look at these and be like, oh, I can see how sometimes I'm manipulative or right, right. <laughs> somebody that they know is, and you know, is that quote bad or is that just what it is? I think. Good and bad is subjective. Right. So it's all in how it's interpreted. So there are phrases or things that you should say that could be offensive to others. And honestly, this is something that I didn't really think about too much until recently when my daughter hit middle school. Mm -hmm. And she would come home and I would say something or my husband would say something and she'd roll her eyes and say, you can't say that anymore. Like, And a lot of it comes down to um, what you call people. Uh-huh. Like, or how you, cla- I wouldn't say what you call people, how you classify people. Mm-hmm. So really being up to date on what is appropriate word wording mm-hmm. when you're classifying people, say, for example, Eskimos, they're not, es- you can't say Eskimos right. anymore. It's Inuit. Mm-hmm. You, you use a different term for that. Or I always used to call my husband, my Sherpa. Well, I can't call him that anymore because that, that could be something that might be offensive to to someone because mm-hmm. it's a very specific thing that he's not doing. Right. If they are doing the roles of that, of a Sherpa, then that's great because that's what they are, but that's right. not what my husband is. I'm not necessarily using it in a derogatory way, but right. I have to be careful of those things. And you can Google a lot of different things that will tell you what is more of what like the quote unquote political Mm-hmm. things that you can use and that you can't use. And it really just depends on your personal threshold level of how far you want to dive into that. 
my generation kind of, yes, I'm, I'm willing to make concessions in some areas of my mm-hmm. verbiage and how I speak with people and about people. Other areas, I'm like, I would never intentionally offend someone with a word. So, right, exactly. So I would hope that if I did say something that was inappropriate, people would give me the grace of knowing where that came from. Mm-hmm. And if they if they wanted to point it out, and I'm always open to learning more because I just I love right. I love right. people and I don't want to offend people. But it can it can come down to like now nowadays shoot that you're a shooter or you're going out to do a shoot. Mm-hmm. That is not terminology that we should be using right. anymore, especially w- around people who have school aged children. Mm-hmm. You know, there's just a sensitivity that we can make we can correct very, very easily. Mm -hmm. And so then when you you get into broader scales of what you should say and what you shouldn't say, you should, you know, stay away from accusatory terms, like, you know, that aggressive style of you should have done this, you could Mm -hmm. have done this, why Mm -hmm. didn't you do this? And you, you, you. Like focusing on the past of how they, uh, past behavior that they did incorrectly instead of maybe showcasing Just here we are. Here's the situation. Here's how we're going to move forward. So you can soften that and say, I really wish you should have done this. Like a client might say that to me and Mm -hmm. I could come Mm -hmm. back and say, I understand how Mm -hmm. you might be feeling that way or you might be interpreting this situation in this way. Here is what that actually meant. And it gives me a chance to clarify it and soften it a little, even though they're coming across with very, very harsh words. It's my job as the recipient of that to either be completely reactionary and come back at him in an aggressive Mm -hmm. way or realize that's probably not my, in my best interest to argue with a client. Right. Right. So let me, let me come back and be a little softer about this and clarify the situation Mm -hmm. in a way that truly, truly is a representation of what I meant or was doing at that time. Yeah, absolutely. I love how you were saying too, that, you know, I understand how you can feel that way. Or like, I think there's some best practices on how Mm -hmm. to start to diffuse these situations. If you're in business and you find one of your clients in one of these um, more challenging communication styles Mm -hmm. that we can get our words across. And I know one of those is to be say like, basically, Hey, I hear you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then kind of, this is what I meant with that. This is what this actually meant. Mm -hmm. Um, Or maybe um, one that I like to use is like, what I'm hearing you say is, you know, if, (laughs) if they're, you know, just to kind of say it back to them a little bit of like, to make sure you're on the same page of what I'm hearing you say is, (laughs) you thought all the digital files were included. (laughs) Right. Right. I understand that that's what you thought. Uh However, right. That's, that's not. The re, you know, that's not the, the realistic view of things. So mm-hmm. yeah, reframing is something that's really, really important, especially in conflict with people. And we could do a whole nother episode on that because that <laughs> is, that's a skill. Being able to do that is a skill yeah. to be able to recognize it and reframe and communicate back in a different way, but also be able to make them feel heard is mm-hmm. super important. Yeah. There's a book. Have you read it? Never Split the Difference. I think Chris Voss is the author. You know what? I think I read that a long time ago. He's the FBI hostage negotiator. He was the CIA's top hostage negotiator. Just fascinating, you know, and that's more about negotiation, but there's still pieces in there about basically diffusing a very stressful situation, Mm -hmm. way more stressful than we will ever face in any of our photography (laughs) situations. Um, But to to like enable that other person, like you said, to feel heard and to Mm -hmm. just diffuse it so you can actually like have a conversation with them. Right. And then hopefully come to an agreement that works for both of you. Right. And the thing is, is that you don't want to think that you have to jump through all these hoops with different kinds of clients. We wish it was Mm -hmm. easy. We wish that we could just not have to worry about all these things. But the fact of the matter is is a lot of different people are going to walk through your door, Mm -hmm. send you inquiries, call you up and want to do business with you because they love your imagery. And it's our job to make sure that they have a great experience with us at least once. If Mm -hmm. if we don't want to have them hire us again, you can do whatever you can to avoid that from happening. But once they come into your, into your world, it's, it's not your problem. Their communication style is not necessarily your problem, but it be, 
it becomes your situation to try and work around because mm-hmm. they're not going to come to the table and say, oh yeah, I was really aggressive there. <laughs> I need to tone that down a little bit next time I deal with Dory. Yeah, no, yeah, no. they're not yeah. going to do that. So it's our job to be able to take care of it and make it work for everyone. Yeah. So good. This has been such a great conversation and so eye opening, and I've absolutely loved it. Um, do you have any kind of final words of wisdom for all of our, especially slightly introverted, introverted pet photographers out there as they take this all in? I think awareness is key. Understanding mm-hmm. that everyone commi- communicates differently knowing that in most situations, it's not personal. That's like the biggest thing, Mm. especially for the people pleasers out there. You know who you are, the people who are a little bit more introverted. It is not personal. This is a business transaction. And even though our art is very personal, personal, wait, what am I trying to say? Our art is very personal to us, right? Right, right, right. Yes. (laughs) Our art art is very personal to us and is so so meaningful to us and we're giving mm-hmm. this to them for a price. They don't have the same view. We they are hiring us. They mm-hmm. are it's, it's a more service. transactional. Mm-hmm. It's a service for them. So understanding where everybody sits within the realm of this this client photographer relationship is really important. So it's not personal. Understand these different understand these different communication styles. And if you need help, reach out. I'm happy to help anyone who gets stuck. So awesome. I love it. And where can they find you out there on the interwebs? On the interwebs. My main place of hanging out is Instagram and I am the Dory Howell, the D O R I E Howell with two L's at the end. So I look forward to seeing people there. Awesome. And then do you have um, websites and other places they can find you online as well? So um, my coaching, my coaching website is harmonyhangout.com. And you can read why I named it Harmony Hangout on that, (laughs) on the page. But HarmonyHangout.com is where I do a lot of different things. You can learn about some of the things that I have to offer. You can learn about some of my wonderful free business resources. And I would love to see people there as well. Awesome. Well, definitely, guys, go check it out. Dory is fantastic. If you guys aren't aware of Dory, she's just a a mover and shaker in the photography industry and a wonderful human. And um, yeah, you should definitely keep her in your realm of, of people that you follow. So Dory, thank you. Thank you so much for being here and um, helping us kind of get a new appreciation for why people might be saying different things and how we're communicating with them and such great information. All right. Thanks, Nicole. Thanks. Bye everybody. We'll see you guys next week. 